Hi everyone, today we're at the Maple Ridge Museum and Archives to experience the legend of Billy Miner. Let's go explore. Hands Up at the Maple Ridge Museum is a brand new experience which retells the life and times of famous train robber Billy Miner. Created by Sea to Sky Immersive, this audiovisual experience takes visitors through British Columbia's first ever train robbery, as well as the trial, escape, and recapture of the infamous Gentleman Bandit. A pleasure to make your acquaintance. I understand that you've come by here today fixing to hear the legend of old Bill Miner. Well, no better place to start that story than here in a train car. Oh, I do love a train. There's a feeling that you get in your soul. Feeling of adventure. Time was the only way you could get anywhere in a fashion was on a train. You want to see the one you love? Get on the train. Need supplies for the kids in the schoolhouse? That's coming in on a train. You need to get your gold somewhere? Get it on a train. Welcome to the mail car of the Imperial Limited. Now, I know it's not a first-class accommodation, but this year is the heart of communications in the early 1900s. Letters of correspondence, goods of all kinds, banknotes, even the gold dust being mined up north, all being sent by rail to whatever its destination might be. It's a thing of beauty. That's neither here nor there. Y'all are wondering about Bill Miner. Once upon a time, there was a bandit named Bill Miner. Yeah, some bad guys are just misunderstood. Some are victims of their circumstance. Bill was neither of them. He was just bad. Mr. Thoburn, what's going on out there? Not sure, Mr. Edwards, but we are slowing down, sir. I've got a bad feeling about this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a holdup. Don't do anything foolish. No one will be harmed. There's nothing in this car that would be of interest to you. Just some mail. I'll ask you kindly one last time to open up this door. Otherwise, stand back. Oh, no. Please don't. I recommend you cover your ears. All right, everyone. Hands up! If everyone keeps those hands where I can see them, no one will get hurt. I mean it. Get those hands up in the air! Doozy says, folks. Listen to Mr. Thorburn. Get those hands up! It's you. You are Bill Mine. You're the one that robbed my train car two years ago. Well then, you know exactly what to do. You can help all these folks out. Grab whatever you can and let's get out of here. Okay, boss. I've got some registered mail here worth a couple of grand. And what's this bottle? Liver pills. Keep them. They may come in handy. Looks like some boxes around, but nothing of any value as far as I can see. Leave the boxes. They'll just slow us down. Let's get out of here. Folks, thanks for your cooperation. Enjoy the rest of your evening and take care of yourselves. Good night, engineer. Take care of yourself. Okay, everybody. The bandits have gone. I, I think we'll be okay now. The engineer will likely be a few minutes preparing the train to go back so we can reattach the cars that were left behind. And then we'll be back on our way to Vancouver. Folks, I heard everything. I'm so sorry that happened to you. But I knew if I laid low, all of it would pass quickly. Look, I, I think we best get out here to continue our story. Y'all don't want to be around when there are bandits about. I reckon the law will be forming a posse before too long. We best be getting out of their way. Just go on out that back door there and the trail you'll see will take you to safety. If everyone stays calm, we'll all make it out of here with no trouble. There's a man hunt going on. I think we can just rest here a spell while things cool down. If you look just over there, you can see the grown town of Maple Ridge. Looks like the train is back and active. 
Good to see they bounced back so quickly. Robbery could be a traumatic thing, but I don't need to tell you that. Oh, and did you all bring my sack along? If you do got it with you, just set it down over there on top of the strong box if you would be so kind. Well, back to old Bill Miner then. Now I understand Bill was born on a farm in Texas, but he quickly made his way west, where he robbed his first stagecoach at the age of 17. Right away, folks started calling him the greatest bandit who ever lived. That got him locked up in San Quentin Maximum Security Penitentiary. The bars wouldn't hold Bill for long, no sir. He busted out of there real quick. Robbing stagecoaches and trains. Was even part of Jesse James' gang for a while. No one really knows why he decided to come up here to Canada. They say it's because he reckoned Canada needed a bit of excitement. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sergeant J.J. Wilson. Who might all you be? Well, I'm George Edwards. This is Billy Dunn. Evening, Sergeant. And the tall one over there is Lewis Calkin. What are you doing all the way out here? Prospecting. We started over at Aspen Grove and worked our way toward Grand Prairie. Are you aware that not a few miles from here there was a robbery on the Canadian Pacific Railroad Imperial Limited? The Imperial Limited was robbed at 11.30 p.m., not far from here, at mile 116. The bandits uncoupled the cars and moved the train ahead. However, it seems from the reports from the railroad employees that the robbers had actually left the real object of their robbery, the express car, behind with the disconnected cars. We believe the leader of the gang to be a man named Bill Miner. Perhaps you've read about him in the papers. As I'm sure you have noted, there's a forest fire burning just north of here. Therefore, we believe that Miner and his gang have fled in this direction, heading for the border. The bandit Miner is a wanted man in the United States as well. It would be a great feather in the cap of Canadian policing to be the ones to capture him. I have a feeling that I'm very close to apprehending the fugitives myself. Billy Miner, Shorty Dunn, Lewis Holquin, you're all under arrest for the robbery of the Canadian Pacific Imperial Limited train. Look out, Bill! It's all up! Shorty! Fireman! all of you. I am sorry. It looks like you've been had by Bill Miner, one of the most notorious con men and bandits in these parts. But you can be proud. It seems he was staying here to talk to you. If it wasn't for you, he'd still be on the loose. We're going to be taking these three in. I am going to need you to testify, however. Extra, extra! The trial of Bill Miner and his game begins today! Oh, Bill Miner's not all that bad. He only robs the CPR once every two years. The CPR robs us every day. There's <laughs> no way George Edwards could be Bill Miner. He's been a good friend of mine for years now. Bill Miner faces life in prison for the May 16th robbery of the Imperial Limited. It just wouldn't be right to put someone so old in prison. Extra, extra. The trial of Bill Miner and his game begins today. <laughs> Mr. Miner, you are no doubt a legendary bandit, but it seems to me you are perhaps not as accomplished as the people of this town have been led to understand. Depends on what you consider to be an accomplishment. I'm not an overly learned man, but I consider myself a good Christian. And it's gotta be worth something. I've been in conversation with the Pinkerton Detective Agency and Mr. Miner. You have indeed lived quite a life, though perhaps not as Christian as you would have us believe, since it seems that you have conveniently forgotten who you are, allow me to take a moment to remind you. You are now stranger to prison, Mr. Minor. In fact, San Quentin Prison near San Francisco has been your principal home since approximately the age of 19. 
I say approximately, as there seem to be only two things in which you have excelled in this life. Lying and going to prison. You went to prison the first time for robbery. Tell me, Mr. Meyer, was the few days of living the high life in San Francisco worth three years of incarceration? Three years of receiving indiscriminate beatings from the guard? Mr. Meyer. You made it worse for yourself. When a mere two months into your sentence, you attempted an escape. At 33, when you were released, you had spent nearly the entirety of your adult life in prison. I've noticed the effect that you've had on the people of the interior of British Columbia. I've seen the crowds, heard the bands, read the newspaper stories. I believe you to be an outwardly kind, understanding, and gentlemanly individual. The gentleman bandit, as the legend goes. And yet you insist on stealing. You insist on continuing to destroy your life and the lives of individuals that you recruit, such as Mr. Dunn here. Today, you stand before this court facing 25 years in the British Columbia Penitentiary. Mr. Minor. At your age, you surely know that you do not have 25 years to spend in a prison. Why can you not consistently do good? Not for the purpose of deception, not for the purpose of building your own legend, simply for the purpose of doing good. Well, Judge, all I can say is I've lived with the time I had. I've lived lifetimes. I ain't never lied to anyone to harm them. The friends I've made across this continent, the young people I've taught to ride horses, the men whose farms and businesses I've helped to grow, the lonely folks that if not for me would have had no one. Judge, the name may be fake, but the good ain't. Unfortunately, sir, the law is based on crimes against his majesty, not on emotions. Therefore, Ezra Allen Minor, also known as William Minor, also known as George Edwards, I hereby sentence you to 25 years at the British Columbia Penitentiary. Sorry you had to see all of that. It's not that pretty of a story, but it's the truth. Or maybe it's not. <laughs> you know, I don't even know the difference sometimes. No matter what, my version is much more fun. That's for dang sure. I'd rather have fun, know the consequences, and be kind to the people I meet than live a dull life. So if I have to spend a bit of time inside these walls, so be it. Well, folks. Don't you worry about old Bill Miner. I'm not gonna die in this jail. Maybe I'll go to Georgia. Who knows? But when I'm back around these parts, I'll be sure to look you up. Good night, folks. Take care of yourself. Remember to keep exploring, and until next time, it's time to exit through the gift shop.